Hey guys, a few weeks ago on Instagram, I talked about this place right here where I had seen it from the road. It looked so promising as an opportunity to try and capture something that is highly textured and over here is where the Milky Way is. So we're in a location right here in Utah County that is southern tip of Utah County and there's not a lot of light pollution. It is awesome. The Milky Way is visible over here. Where the sun is setting, the Milky Way is practically already because once the sun sets, the Milky Way is practically vertical completes being vertical and then tips over before the core completely, the ball of the core completely goes down below the horizon. So I'm out here on a solo photog adventure today. I am going to capture the Milky Way from this spot. I'm gonna try and get the nice textured cracked ground in the foreground right close to my camera with the Milky Way vertical up in the distance. So trying to avoid any damage to the cracks and putting a footprint or two in my frame, I'm gonna go this back road through the forest, find my way into this spot and check out how it looked with my camera. Let's go down. So now I play with my camera, I look at the shot, see what's in frame, and decide whether I put my tripod here for the evening. Look how deep those cracks are. And you can see the water inside them. The water is still only about four inches down where it starts being more moist. The cracks are amazing. I've been around with my camera and checked out how it looks on this lens. This is the lens, my Tamron 15 to 30, that I'm going to be using tonight. Fully wide open and out at 15 millimeters. I'm gonna use this tonight on my Canon 60 so I know that this is the frame I'm going to see when the Milky Way is out. I settled on a setup. So my biggest challenge, I am going wide so that I have the Milky Way in frame. And the biggest challenge will be stitching these together where there's an obvious subject on the left that is going to basically bow a huge curve. It's gonna be crazy curvy because of the wide angle lens at 15 millimeter and because I'm so close to it and because I framed it on the furthest left of my frame. And so all of those things are working against me. The distortion is going to be great. But I'm actually liking that idea. What I'm hoping is that the distortion of the cane at the bottom of the cat next week, I'll have a lapel mic, a replacement lapel mic next week. With my wide angle lens, I'm actually going to create a curve in the cattail that's going to point at the Milky Way. So I'm really excited about that. The distortion that's going to happen is not going to be a negative because I'm using it to point towards my subject. So right now it's 551. I have until 638 for sunset and then I still have to wait until 809 for astronomical dusk to end. Once astronomical dusk ends, it is the darkest time of night. 
right there. Immediately at 8.09 p.m., this sky is gonna be the darkest it's going to be all night, or at least the beginning of it being as dark as it can be all night. And that's when I'll capture my Milky Way. So now that my camera's in position, I'm gonna go grab a few more things from my car and get ready to sit here for a couple hours. I'm back in the car because I can see the camera from here. Just right there, just right there is the camera. And so why do I need to go out there and sit in the dirt when I can watch it from here, sit in my car with some power and work on editing a podcast? This is a perfect opportunity. All right, now I'm walking back towards the camera. Whew, branch. Right now, since you're not gonna be able to see much, you might as well just watch my feet hike. Right now, we are in the middle of nautical dusk. For those of you who haven't learned yet, that the periods, the time periods after sunset, where the night sky gets darker and darker, progressively darker towards the darkest that it can get, which is after astronomical dusk. So I'm lucky right now to have Venus still on the horizon. And Venus, Venus is a very, very bright object. So it's a perfect thing to focus on because I'm gonna have a very bright object to look at. I set my f-stop to be as wide as I wanna go so that I know that where I'm focusing at is gonna be on the f-stop I'm actually using. And now that I've focused and I'm happy with where I am, I tape off my focus ring. That way I don't accidentally bump it don't accidentally spin it. Don't accidentally do anything to ruin my next shots. I don't want to have to focus over and over again, and I believe that is going to be sufficient. So my current focus, if that's correct, and I like it once the stars are out, then being taped off right there is going to be perfect. So as you can see, we are heading into astronomical dusk. It is nautical dusk right now for another eight minutes. And so being that it's nautical dusk, I can see stars. I can maybe even make out some parts of the brightest part of the Milky Way, but watch a typical exposure. I mean, every exposure is different, but let's just do a standard 3200 ISO, 20 second shutter, this is a full frame camera with a 15 millimeter focal length, so I can do 20 seconds and still have no star trailing. With the 500 rule, 600 rule, both of those will allow me to do 20 seconds. So let's take the shot. Look how bright that is. So even at this time of night where it seems yeah, pretty dark. It's nautical dusk. And nautical dusk has enough light. Nautical dusk has enough light over in the horizon that is making it so bright that my image looks like that. I mean, it's practically daylight. You can still make out detail on the ground. You can still make out detail of the cattail. And we even had a car trail. <laughs> nice. And a crazy moth. How's it going, moth? You vibrating? I wonder if it's sending off any pheromones. If you're calling for your mate, please don't use my camera as your hotel. So, I'm gonna wait for another half an hour when it's actually in astronomical dusk, which seems really dark, and you'll see that it's still too bright to show and resolve a nice Milky Way. All right, nighttime filming is always the toughest because I gotta deal with these funny light sources and really extra bright light sources. I won't be able to see the stars when I finally look back, but I wanted to give you an update. Right now, look at this picture. It is during astronomical dusk, and you can see that you can actually make out the Milky Way. You can see the Milky Way, you can make out the detail of the Milky Way, and it looks like it actually could work. I mean, you might be happy with this shot, but you see that really bright, bright white area on the horizon. So that white light is the horizon light. As the Earth curves away from the sun, that white light is the last band of light coming from the sun as it's setting now probably, let's see, it's seven o'clock. It's after sunset in California compared to here. 
Another problem has come up with what looks like, yeah, I see the Milky Way and I can tell where it is now. The Milky Way is far more left than I realized it was going to be. I checked this area and I used my app photo pills to see where the Milky Way core would be and I knew it would be off in that direction. Specifically where around those trees, I didn't know exactly. And so I had to make an educated guess and I know it's in frame and you can see it's in frame, but it's not that far right side of the frame. It's not providing the balance I wanted. But because I've set up this composition, I'll wait and see what happens. Let's take the shot, let's hold out for that moment and capture it the best I can. I think the core is a little bit too low for this berm anyway. So if I wait until later, it won't be as big of a deal as it would have if I had the galactic core in frame. And if nothing else, I'll move the camera over there to that side of this spot and capture more of the Milky Way and capture more of the Milky Way and less of the trees. All right, guys, I've got everything tucked into this small tight view so that you can see it. Sorry, it's kind of awkward. Captured everything. That shot with the cattails in it turned out to be very tight on the left, and so I did a nice, tall portrait panoramic. Because of the portrait panoramic, I wanted to move over to the right here and find some of the terrain with the Milky Way in the middle and try and capture a different type of shot. I've already got a nice far left balanced portrait panoramic let's try something else while i was doing the portrait panoramic i realized how cool the milky way looked when i got very high in the sky practically looking straight up above me stitching all of that together is going to look really awesome and so i like that look i'm going to keep it and i brought it out to the middle got the milky way in the spot where i actually had a leading line and a crack going straight to the milky way bulge it's very center balanced but because I go straight up in the sky and I go way down and focus on a bush, I think it's going to be okay. It'll be very symmetrically balanced instead of being something more like the rule of thirds. I can't wait to see how it turns out. At worst, I can push everything far to the left and make it a tighter image and crop it in so that everything that I put in the middle is more on the right or the left, depending on what works better. So thanks again, guys, for watching this video. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed coming along for a photog adventure. Be sure to check back in next week and get out there with your camera and have a photog adventure of your own.